Hey world, Richard from the Big Rock Room here. Just wanted to say hello. We're going to try and uh, keep you a bit more up to date with what's going on here in the studio. What's uh, happening, what we're recording, what we're working on. So stay tuned. Keep checking back in on us and we'll be back very, very soon. Stay well, stay healthy, keep safe. Bye for now. So... The story starts at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, when basically we realised that thinking in terms of albums and trying to release uh, things consistently was never going to happen with that much kind of workload. So we decided we were going to just release three to four songs, or anything, kind of one to four songs at any one time, maximum. We were going to release some audio every four weeks and video every four weeks and leapfrog those two things at two week intervals so we release content every two weeks during the year of 2020 we decided we sign ourselves up to Bandcamp because we wanted to be on that platform anyway and we'd release the two albums the rdh album and the electric caesar album in parts basically three to three and two songs at a time and that would kind of get us moving and in the background we could uh, work on new material so once we got Bang Campbell from running we kind of knew we had about uh, five months before we needed to release any new music so we started working on stuff I was working on the RDH stuff um, demoing and kind of sifting through all the old stuff I'd got together um, we'd worked on the Good Mountain thing the Hidden by Trees song uh, we were working on that we were finishing it up mixing that up uh, me and Paul were working on another project uh, that we demoed six songs for and we're recording that uh, properly we were me and jude were working on headcase which was our very first band together as teenagers and we're kind of going back and re-recording that whole catalogue of music uh, we were working on some sofa talk things for youtube we were working on i disappear we were tracking i disappear we were being really productive getting ready for that kind of um, kind of may june start for the new material things were going really really well everyone was in a great spirits and then, what happened? And then, lockdown happened. The pandemic hit, everything stopped. I remember just before lockdown was came in, saying goodbye to Jude, we'd been in the studio, and it was kind of a weird feeling to kind of go, well, I'll hopefully see you very soon. Who knows? You know, none of us knew what was going to really happen at this point in time. And bizarrely, as kind of lockdown came in and whatever, Mentally, for me, I, I was in the kind of, kind of most peaceful state I'd ever been in years for, at the beginning. You know, we're kind of, I knew I couldn't control anything. I knew I just, we just had to get on with it. And I was kind of at peace with the world, which was an incredible feeling I've not had for a long time. So studio-wise, we had to change tact. We knew we had some sofa talks in the bag. We knew we had Good Mountain ready to go or ready to mix, if you like. And we knew we had the RDH and Electric Seas of the last few parts to go. So we just had to rethink, what are we going to do? So, as the reality of lockdown lasting for a lot longer than we thought, we had to start thinking a little bit more long term, especially on the visual side of what we were trying to release. We knew we had the audio recorded for I Disappear, we just not, before lockdown, not had a chance to get in and film ourselves. So... Obviously, during lockdown, Zoom became the thing. Obviously, everyone got used to that multiple screen and what have you, and a lot of bands released it. It was the only way to do it. So we got on a Zoom call, decided, let's give this a go. It's the only way we're going to be able to do this. So everyone sent me in the footage, and I edited it together. To save time, my friend Jake Mazuka mixed it for us, knocked it out of the park, and we just pulled it together quite quickly once we made the decision to do it. It was obviously a very special video for me because it was the first time my Tom was actually going to be drumming with me in a video. Um, again, he knocked it out of the park. It was great. We did it and we kept moving forward. Very special moment. So I'm going to start today taking us back to September 2019 where I started a kind of mindset creativity course with a wonderful man called Mike Monday and the Make Music Your Life kind of course. So he sets missions. His big thing is kind of splurging, which is basically creating ideas. And just so happened, what turned out to be the week before lockdown, the kind of mission was write to your strengths. So I'd written a riff on my beloved acoustic in E, decided to take that and say, I tell you what, I'm going to keep it in E. So I transferred it to E, which I'd never done with RDH before. It'd always been down tuned to D or B from there. Kept it in E. 
and kind of wrote the song when I took it into the studio, which happened to be March the 22nd, the day before lockdown, wrote the song in a day, or most of the song in a day. Then lockdown happened, and weirdly, the riffs kept coming. So, kind of energized by this first song coming together so quickly, I uh, decided let's, let's keep going. So I kind of gave myself a remit for the second idea. I want to write like a leady type riff. So I promptly did that again. Song came together, song two came together really quickly. But lyrically on this one, I kind of sang about what was happening with us with lockdown at the time. So that was all cool. And kind of, again, still feeling energized and still feeling ready to go. It's like, let's go again. So gave myself the remit, I want to write a fast song. So I sat down, wrote this fast riff. Again, the whole song kind of then wrote itself. And lyrically, again, I sang about what was happening at the time. And this is where the birth of the COVID diaries came from. The kind of idea of, I've written these songs in this period of time, let's just document them as, as they are. And so COVID-3 is what's coming your way tomorrow. So now we've got the first three COVID songs out there, Reborn, Uncharted, Couldn't Care Less. The original idea was actually to record two three-track EPs because I'd written these six songs in a very short succession of time. And I'd gone in and decided to record the first three as one batch for an EP. As I was recording them, got visited by my very old friend, the Black Dog, and everything kind of stopped. And I lost a lot of time, if you like. So... As I kind of got myself together again, it became really unrealistic that I could get three tracks finished for the t the date, the 19th of June, that I decided to release the track. So I spent a lot of time and it really kind of hurt me to think of like, I got to just, I'm going to have to just release one track at a time here. That's what we're going to have to do to make this work. Um, and finally, I did find peace with just doing exactly that. So when I came to terms with the fact that I was only going to be releasing one track at a time. It was actually a weight off because the workload kind of went down. And it still fit the original remit. I was still going to release a piece of music every four weeks. So it was okay to actually feel like that. It just was hard to let go of that initial EP idea. And But the other thing that kind of happened at the time was, with the time frame I now had, I couldn't get the song to distro kid in time to get it out on all the digital platforms so it was decided just on the release date we'd put it to Bandcamp only and then it could go to distro kid at the same time and a month later when we released a new track the existing track would then be live on all the digital platforms and that was kind of how we go and that felt good we were still doing exactly what we set out to do and I was kind of I was happy with that one of the big decisions behind the Bandcamp, releasing on the Bandcamp first, was the fact that as soon as I upload and press the button, it's live. So, you know, even with COVID-1 reborn, I was full of fear, nervous about doing it. Obviously, I still wasn't in a great place at the time. And it actually was two minutes to midnight. Very Iron Maiden. I, I didn't even plan that, but there you go. Um, yeah, two minutes to midnight on the day of release, 19th of June, I actually pressed go on it because I was fearful. I, I wasn't going to do it. There's a lot of things going on at the time. I did it. I was glad I did it. I got it out there, kind of closed the book on it. It's done. It's out there. Let go of your ridge. Move on to COVID-2. So, you know, um, it all worked out in the end. And that's the way things do happen, isn't it? And it's just sometimes it's crazy how you get to a point and you know you're just constantly navigating this and making it up as you go along today i wanted to talk to you about the covid diaries artwork i had a concept once the whole idea had come together of having like a covid at a desk writing a diary and what have you but way way beyond any kind of skills i have so i decided to kind of hit my friend up the wonderful Jeremy Cunningham, who's the bass player in the Levelers, very good friend of mine, and essentially my boss as well, if you really get to the crux of it, uh, points. Um, I kind of asked him, and you know what? He took me up on the offer, and he did it. And this here is the original piece of artwork he sent me for the COVID diaries. Um, I don't believe... 
it could have been any better. It was absolutely phenomenal. I had a real, real piece of artwork for this project now. Amazing. So, the, the COVID diaries were stacking up, the songs were stacking up, and so I knew the kind of audio side was taken care of. I could still release music every month. But it was like, what the hell are we going to do on the visual side of things, the YouTube side of things? Because there's only me with the studio in the big art room and Paul, who've actually got the ability to record music. And of course, at this point, we were in lockdown and we couldn't get together. So I kind of put it to my Tom. Hey, you did great on I Disappear. Let's do another one. And I came up with Napalm Death, Breed to Breathe, a song we both loved. Um, and we did it. We basically recorded it, so obviously I could record my parts, Tom's parts, the vocals here. Paul, I sent the tracks over to Paul, he recorded his parts. We did the same again with the with the, uh, the visuals, recorded all the parts, pulled it all together. We did it. Um, and I'm really impressed with the results. After we released Napalm Death, we unfortunately found out we got a... A strike against us, a copyright strike against us, and ACDC Back in Black had been taken down. We got a couple of other kind of partial strikes, and I got really kind of like, you know what, now's not the time to do this. I was really, really annoyed, and I didn't want to put the time and the effort in to have these songs taken down. So we decided, let's try and make a lyric video. We'd had the Good Mountain song out, obviously, Hidden by Trees. So me and Paul basically, back and to, lots of Zoom calls, lots of back and to and what have you, put together the Hidden by Trees lyric video. We'd never tried one before. We thought, let's see what we can do. And again, we battled through. It was hard. We'd never done one, but we got there and we we're very impressed with the results. So enjoy. So it felt really good to have the Good Mountain Hidden by Trees lyric video up online kind of a visual complement to the audio. We had a visual side now. It was a new skill set for us to kind of figure out how to do a lyric video. So that felt really good. Uh, and it was like, well, okay, next YouTube, what do we do? Uh, I just released COVID-3, Couldn't Care Less by RDH. So I thought, let's just do it that. This is again, you know, it's original music, so we're not going to get a copyright claim because it's our music. And that's what I was fearful of at the time. I just, what can we do to not, to not put ourselves in that position right now. I didn't feel like I, I could deal with that. So we I put, a, put together the lyric video for it, tried to make it feel different. Um, it's a learning curve, still a learning curve. It's enjoyable, it's a different asset. So uh, again, felt really good about the results. Uh, and that's it, just trying to keep the momentum up, feel good about what we're doing.